All right, welcome to our fourth lesson of Calculus 3. Uh, so last time we learned about a way to combine two matrices together in a sort of uh, multiplication called the dot product. And the dot product combined two vectors together and gave us a scalar quantity. And what did that scalar represent? What did that number mean? It was roughly a measure of how parallel two vectors are to one another. So the bigger the dot product is, um, the more parallel they are, and then the closer to zero is, and once it hits zero, they're perpendicular or orthogonal. Um, so we learned about a product that combines two vectors together um, to um, get a scalar, uh, but you kind of expect like with multiplication of numbers, you combine two numbers together to get a number. So you, you might expect there's something we could do to combine two vectors together and get another vector. Oh, it looks like um, some people were talking about recordings um, in the chat. Uh, the reason why we're kind of uh, recording them and like putting them on at the end of the week is uh, to kind of encourage attendance. So last semester, um, Dr. Huang put the recordings up immediately. And then after like the first two weeks of class, no one came to the live lectures or the, even the Zoom lectures anymore. And they just kind of just watch the recordings uh, at home. But I do want to foster uh, some kind of like class cohesiveness, I want to encourage people to show up. So I'm going to compromise and I'll put them up at the end of the week so you guys can still have them for review, uh, but you're still kind of encouraged to get the, come to class and get the material now. So that's kind of the, the compromise. All right. But anyways, let's get back to the class here. So we're going to learn about a new type of multiplication vectors today called the cross product. And with the cross product, we're going to combine two vectors and get another vector. So this is going to be different from the dot product. Okay, so here's what the cross product is here. Given two vectors with these components right here, u and v right there, uh, the cross product is defined by this right here. And for those of you who haven't seen a, a matrix before or a determinant, uh, that's what this is right here. So this is called uh, the determinant of a matrix. So the matrix is this three by three grid of numbers, although it could have like, you know, it could be other dimensions as well. It could be like two by three or one by four, whatever, but this is three by three. And the determinant is how we get a specific quantity out of this matrix. And the quantity we end up getting out kind of has this like convoluted formula right here. So we put the first vector in the cross product all across down here. And then we put the second one down here at the bottom and then we have i, j, and k. Remember, those represent our x, y, and z directions. We have those up at the top. Okay, so how do we actually, so how do we get this? And, and one thing is, I, I, I encourage you to not just straight up memorize this formula. That's, that, that's not really the best way of computing these. Here, here are two ways that I would recommend that you compute these. Um, so the first way of computing this, uh, what's called a determinant, is we're going to um, draw three lines like this. Okay, so this line goes through I and then U2 and V3. This one goes through J, but then it seems to run out of stuff to go through here. Uh, but what we do is in these blank spaces, we write copies of what we had earlier. So we have V1 and V2 here. We have U1 and U2 here. And we have I hat, J hat, and eventually we're gonna, actually we don't have K hat. So we're kind of filling in um, some of the leftover spaces we need. So we're going to do this, and then we're going to go um, backwards through here. So we end up having um, K going through U1 and U2, and then we have I going through U3 and V2, and then we have J going through here. Okay, so we have this sort of like weird picture going on here. What is this? actually mean right here? Well, whenever we have something going from the top and going down to the right, we're gonna multiply everything together and have a positive sign. So we're gonna have U2 times V3I. U2 V3I hat. And then here we're gonna have J U3 V1. And then finally, we're gonna have K U1 V2. Okay. If you guys had to guess, what do you think we're going to do when we go the other way? 
and we have these diagonals right here. What do you think the difference is going to be with these three? So if we look up here, you see we have some minus signs there. Um, so that's how we're actually going to get our minuses. Anytime we go backwards to go down and to the left, we're going to subtract these. So we're going to have minus k hat, and then we have v1 u2, and then we have minus j hat, that's uh, u3, wait, sorry. Oh, we have, we have i here, what am I doing? Yes, yeah, so we have i here, and then it's u3 v2, and then we have j, and then we multiply by here, and we have u1 v3. So that's one way of getting the dot product um, this way is, is kind of interesting. It has like a nice geometric picture with it. So it's easier to remember uh, in that way. Um, the next one I think is a bit more common uh, for computing these determinants. So this is called, I don't know what the name of this one is. This is called determinant by uh, minors. So what does that mean? Well, let's start with I. Let's say we want to know what the I coordinate of our dot product is. So if we have I, we have I hat, and then we cover up the row and column that I is in. And whatever we have left over, that's going to form like a little mini matrix, a two by two matrix. And this little mini matrix, this is called a minor. Then what we do is we subtract and then we do J and then we kind of cover up the stuff that's in the row and column of J. And what do we have left? We have these and these right here. So we're going to have U1, V1, and then U3, V3. And then finally, we're going to add K and do the same thing. So we're gonna come up the last column in the first row, and then we have U1, U2, V1, V2. All right. So let's see here. So what do these mean? How do we do the determinants of these? Well, if you have a two by two matrix, the way you do the determinant is you um, multiply um, these two on this diagonal together and subtract these two. Kind of similar to what we did up here. When we went down and to the right, we have addition. And when we go down to the left, we have subtraction. So this will be U2 V3 minus V2 U3. And then we have J and we have U1 V3 minus V1 U3 right here. And then finally, we have these guys were multiplied. And there we go. And this ends up being the same formula as up here, only we just apply that minus uh, to flip these guys around. Why do you subtract J? When you do determinants this way, you alternate sign as you move along a row or column. So there, there, maybe if this was a four by four matrix, I would have had a negative for like, I don't know, maybe L hat or something like that. All right, so there we go. So this is how we compute these. So let's actually see a concrete example here. Up a little bit, please. Well, what was that? Sorry, up a little bit, please. If you oh, can. there's nothing written under here. Oh. Um, oh. So, <laughs> um, all right, so, so that's, so what's a determinant? I saw a question like that. A determinant is this kind of three by three box with these lines right here. And how do we compute? What do we actually see what that is? We do one of these two processes right here. It's a little bit tedious at first, but eventually once you practice it enough, you get used to it and you could do it relatively quickly. All right, so let's see here. So let's see an example of this. So calculate the cross product of U cross V where U is this vector and V is this vector. All right, so let's do U cross V. So let's see here. So we always have I hat, J hat, and K hat in our top row. And then U, we write the components of U across here. And then we have the components of V right here. Okay, so I'm definitely a bit more comfortable doing this with minor. So that's gonna be how I do this, but there are, there are a lot of fans of, of this method as well. So feel free to do it that way um, if you'd like. All right, so let's see here. So we have I, and then the things that are not in the same column and row as I are these four here. So we have negative one, zero, negative three, negative one. Then we subtract J hat. This is another easy negative sign to forget. So uh, yeah, don't forget about that. 
So the things not in the same column and row as J are these two and these two. And then finally, we have K hat here. We have negative two, negative two, negative one, negative three. Okay. And then finally, let's compute uh, what these guys are going to do. So we have negative one times negative one is one. And then I subtract zero times negative three. So that's just zero. So I have one I hat. All right, let's check this part out. So we have negative two times negative one is two. And then we have another zero right here. So that's going to be two, but then there's a negative there. So we have minus two J hat. And then finally, we have negative two times negative three is six. And then negative two times negative one is two. But remember, we subtract whatever we get from this multiplication right here. All right, and there we go. So if we simplify this a bit, we have I hat minus two J hat plus four K hat. And if we put this in the same notation that we got things earlier, it's one negative two and four right here. All right, so this is just a basic example on how we um, do a, a cross product here. All right, now the next problem here, the next example for this, it wants us to do U cross V, and then when we get whatever this vector is, it wants us to cross it with W. Now, the good news is that U cross V, U and V are exactly the same as they were in this example. So this, this one negative two, four, this is just gonna be exactly what we're gonna put here. Then all we have to do is cross it with this new vector uh, W right here. Uh, let's see, so we have a question. If the resulting vector equal to the scalar quantity you would get from the dot product, It'll be similar to that, um, but it'll be a little bit different. So we'll see that in a little bit. Okay, so let's do U cross V cross W. I remember this was U cross V. Okay, so we're gonna do one negative two four crossed with W, which is three, three, one. Okay, so let's set up our determinant here. I, J, and K hat. We have one, negative two, and four, and three, three, and one. Okay, let's see here. So we have I hat times negative two, one, and then four, three. All right, and then we have minus J hat. Up. Oh, thank you. All right, we have minus J hat here. So that's going to be these two columns that are not in j hat right here. All right, so we have one, three, four, one. And then we have k hat, which is one, negative two, three, and three. All right, and then all we need to do is just compute what each of these little uh, minors are here, and then we're good to go. All right, so I see some people asking about ordering here. So what these parentheses mean is that we did u cross v first, and then we took the answer to that and crossed it with W. And another way, so another thing that we could do is do U cross the result of V and W. So we could do V and W's cross first and then cross it with U. And with normal multiplication, that's going to be the same, but we're actually going to see that this is not going to be the same as this. These are not equal in general. We'll see that in a second. Anyways, back here we have negative two minus 12, remember we subtract these, so that's minus 14. All right, we have one and then minus 12, so that's negative 11, but that negative will make it positive. And then finally, right here, we have one times three is three, and then we subtract negative six, so that's really adding six, so we have nine. All right, so this is what we get out of that right here. Now, I don't wanna do all of this because it's definitely gonna take a lot of time, uh, but if we do this in the other order right here, so if we go down here and we try it the other way where we do V and W first and then U, uh, you actually end up getting um, 14, or sorry, you end up getting negative three, six, and two. So if you do it this way, you get negative three, six, and two, which is totally different from this. It's not even like a multiple of this or something similar here, it's completely different. 
Talk so mainly. pay attention to the order in which you do uh, these guys here. Uh, is it supposed to be, why is it positive nine and not negative nine? Uh, well, let's see. So I do, um, I do one times one here, and that's one. And then I subtract four times three, one minus 12 is negative 11. And then I apply the negative sign here to get a uh, positive 11. So that's, that's what's going on there. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's one thing. And, and unfortunately, these cross products, they actually, this isn't the only rule of algebra that you would expect it to satisfy that it doesn't. There are also other things that it's not going to work the way you'd expect. So cross products can be uh, a little bit tricky. All right. So let's see here. So the vector u cross v is orthogonal to both u and v. This is definitely something you want to know. And this is one of the main uh, apl applications of the cross product. If you ever want a vector that goes in a different direction than both u and v, or whatever vectors you started with, the cross product will immediately give you one of those. And in case you guys are interested in uh, seeing why this is true, um, I'm not going to go into this, but you could do u, and then we dot this with v cross w, or sorry, u cross v, what am I doing? So if it's orthogonal to u, the original vector, this should be zero. And then we need to see if it also does that with v as well. So if it's orthogonal to both u and v, the dot products here should be zero. And that has to do with, with the proof of this, but um, fortunately we don't have time to go into that. Okay, now here's kind of a more geometric interpretation of the uh, cross product. And this is called the right-hand rule. Um, so if you ever kind of want to see which direction your cross product is going to go relative to your other vectors, use what's called the right-hand rule here. So you kind of put your hand in a flat shape like this, so you can see on the camera, flat shape like this, for those of you in the audience, and you kind of just thrust it or point it in the direction of your first vector, the, the first one right here being you. So that means we're going to point our fingers this way along the vector u right here. And then what we do is we curl them in the direction of the second vector. So since v is uh, kind of opening this way, I'm gonna curl my hands like this. And then the result, the direction of your final vector of u cross v is gonna be where your thumb is going. So for this one, it's kind of coming vertically out of the page here. So we can draw that on this picture. So it's kind of coming vertically upwards and this will be u cross v. Now suppose that we had v maybe on the other side, then we would have to do u curl in the direction of v and we see our thumbs going downwards. So uh, which one we do first and which side it's on relative to the other vector makes a big difference. It'll change which way our cross product is going here. All right, so let's see here. So that's kind of the right-hand rule. That's how we could tell which direction we're going to be going in um, with these. Now, another property of cross products, so the perpendicular thing, this is a big deal. So the perpendicular part's big. Um, and in general, the more perpendicular two vectors are, the magnitude of the cross product will be larger. And then, as you could probably guess, the more parallel um, two vectors are, the smaller cross product will be. So this almost is kind of like the opposite of the dot product. The dot product liked it when vectors were parallel and didn't like it when they were perpendicular, but we seem to have the, uh, the opposite situation uh, going on right here. So this is definitely something to kind of keep in mind. All right, our next problem wants us to find a unit vector orthogonal to both this guy right here and this guy right here. And whenever you want to find a vector orthogonal to two other vectors, you should immediately think cross product. Cross product is the most straightforward way of doing this. All right, so let's try to find what the cross product of these is, get more practice. I guess I'm gonna call this guy U. I'm gonna call this one V right here. 
So we're going to do u cross v. And by the way, we could have done this cross this. We could have done it the other way, and we also would have gotten a correct answer. There's more than one uh, correct answer for this. So if we do u cross v, that's going to be the determinant of i, j, and k. All right, so then what's our u vector here? It's 1, 1, negative 2. We'll be expected to calculate both uh, correct answers. It says find a unit vector, so you really only need to get one here. We have 1, 1, negative 2, and then we have 1, negative 2, and 4 right here. All right, so let's get some more practice with this. So our I component will be determined by the minor, um, these four right here. So one, negative two, uh, negative two, four. We subtract J hat, um, and then we have one, one, and then negative two, four for our box here. All right, and then finally we add K hat, and that's going to be these four right here for the minor. So we have one, 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 negative two. Okay, so let's see what this vector is. Let's see, we do one times four, that's four, and then we subtract these two multiplied together. So these two multiplied together will also be four, so we're actually going to get zero for this component right here. So there's no component in the x direction here. Um, let's see, the next one, we do one times four is four, and then we subtract these two to get six in total for this. But then there's the extra negative. So that'll be negative six right here. Then finally, we do one times negative two is negative two. And then we subtract one times one to get negative three. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, cross product right here. All right, but the, but the thing is, uh, we're not quite done with this here. Um, we're going to have to find a unit vector. So we want to divide by the magnitude here. Will the two possible results always be anti-parallel? Yes, so if we would have flipped the order of this and done V here and U here, we would have ended up getting zero, six, and three. And that's something we're gonna talk about in a little bit. If you flip the order of the cross product, you're gonna get the same thing, but it's gonna be the negative of what you would get before. All right. So we need to make this be a unit vector. So we're just going to divide by the magnitude. So we're gonna have zero, negative six, negative three, divided by the square root of zero squared plus negative six squared plus negative three squared. All right, let's see, this is gonna be 36 and nine. So we're just dividing this stuff by root 45. All righty, so this is going to be our unit vector perpendicular to u and v. And this is going to be something we're going to be doing quite a lot. We're going to be finding um, a lot of vectors that are perpendicular to two other vectors. This is going to be a very common thing that we're going to be doing in the future. All right, so we got that. That's good practice. All right. Now, one thing we can do is we can look at the cross products of the different unit vectors. So remember the i, j, and k, they represent the unit vectors in the x direction, in the y direction, and in the z direction. And the way to remember what each of these are going to be is it goes in alphabetical order, and then once you get to k, it just wraps around back to i. So what you're doing here you're going i, j, and k. And if you follow the arrows in the correct direction, your answer will be positive. But if you go backwards along these, your answer will be negative. So for example, let's look at i and j. So if I do i cross j, I go to the next one, I get k. And since I went in alphabetical order, it's gonna work out. Uh, and it's gonna be positive. Let's see, j and k here. So we have j times k, and then the next one we're gonna get is i and we're following the arrow, so it's positive. And then finally, k times i will give us j. And if you're wondering why this is true, you can go ahead and use the right-hand rule that we just learned with the x, y, and z axes. This is another way to see it. So remember, i 
is this vector here going along in the x direction, j goes this way right here, and then k goes up this way. So for example, this first one, we point our fingers in the direction of i, we curl them in the direction of j, and then our thumb is pointing upwards, which is the k direction here. So that's why i cross j is k. And you could do the same thing for the rest of these right here. The K keeps looking like an H. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> that's my bad handwriting here. Sorry about that. Anytime we have a hat, I, I, don't, I don't think we're ever gonna do H hat here. If you can't curl your fingers backwards, then that means you need to turn your hand upside down. So for example, if we do J cross I, we're gonna get negative K hat. And let's see how that would work with the, um, uh, with the right hand rule. So we point our fingers in the direction of J, we curl in the direction of I, and then we're going downwards this time. So we're gonna have negative K right here. So if you, if you end up finding you can't curl your directions in that direction, then you just flip your hand over. All right, K cross J, so that's going backwards here, we're gonna get negative I, and then I cross K, that's gonna give us negative J. Okay, now what happens if we cross a vector with itself right here. We have I cross I equals J cross J equals K cross K. Um, what do you guys think these are gonna be? Zero, that's right. So these are all going to be the zero and it's the zero vector by the way. So we have to put the little arrow here. Now, why is that? Well, if you have the I vector like this and you have another copy of it, what can you say about these two vectors more than that they're equal? They're, they're also parallel to one another. And whenever we have two parallel vectors and we cross them together, that's going to end up giving us zero. So cross product doesn't like parallel vectors. It, it spits out zero uh, for those. How is the zero vector different from the normal zero? So the zero vector is written like zero, zero, zero. It has these components here. The zero scalar, that's just the number zero. All right, so I think I've been alluding to this quite enough here. Um, if theta is the angle between the non-zero vectors u and v, then what do we get? Well, remember, this is sort of the opposite of the dot product here, right? Dot product ended up giving us the biggest result when they were parallel, but now we wanna get the biggest result when they're perpendicular and have zero when they're parallel. So what is this gonna end up being? It's gonna be the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v and then what do you guys think? What do you think I'm gonna put here? Sign, that's right. So this is going to be UV and then sine of theta here. So this is very similar to the, um, uh, to the formula we had for the dot product. All right, and then just in the same way that it worked for the dot product, two non-zero vectors U and V are parallel if and only if U cross V is the zero vector. And reason being is that if you're parallel, that means the angle between you and the other vector is either zero or pi. And then sine of zero or sine of pi, both of those are equal to zero. So you're gonna end up having the zero vector right here. Yeah, Robert's mentioning in this, this if with two f's in it, this is kind of mathematical shorthand for if and only if. And what does that mean? It means that this implies that. So if you have parallel vectors, the cross is gonna be zero, but it also goes the other way too. If you have these crossing to be zero, then they're going to be parallel. Now, not every logical statement goes uh, both ways, but if it says if and only if, then it does go both ways. All right, so let's see here. So the area of a parallelogram determined by the vectors U and V. So if I stretch U in this direction, I stretch V in this direction and I make copies up here. The area of this parallelogram will be the magnitude of the cross product. All right, so let's, let's see why that is. Oh, by the way, this is the same parallelogram you could do for um, uh, adding the vectors together. So this is the parallelogram method. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's take a look at this. So the area of a parallelogram is going to be the base of the parallelogram times the height. 
Okay, so how long is the base of this parallelogram? Well, it looks like it's going to be the magnitude of u. Okay, and then how much is the height? How much do we vertically uh, go up this way right here? Well, that's going to be this distance right here. It's not just the magnitude of v, it's this. It's gonna be a little bit shorter than the magnitude of v. All right, well, actually another way we could write that is, is right here. Now, what's this height going to be equal to? I have the vertical component of v. How do I write that out? Oh, it, looks like the, it looks like the chat has it already. So this is gonna be the magnitude of v times sine of theta. So that's going to be our height right here. And like we just established up here, this is equal to the magnitude of the cross product. So this is why, um, yeah, this is why the magnitude of this is the same as cross product. And a more intuitive way of seeing this geometrically is what you could do is you can kind of cut out this triangle here and you could put it into this spot over here. And then it ends up making a rectangle that looks like this. And the area of that rectangle will be this length and then this height right here. So that's kind of a, a more intuitive way to see this. All righty. So we have that geometric interpretation as well. Um, by the way, notice that this is the magnitude of u cross v. So this, once we do the magnitude, is a scalar. And this is a scalar. One thing that's not true and don't say this, is u cross v is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v sine theta. So this is, this is not true. Do not say this right here. Reason this is not true is that this is a vector and this is just a number or a scalar. So there's no way that these two things could be equal here. So don't forget about uh, the absolute value or magnitude sign when you're doing this. All right, so let's go on to another example here. So find a vector perpendicular, and there's our word perpendicular. That means we're probably going to do a cross product. Find a vector perpendicular to the plane containing these points. Uh, one, negative one, zero, two, one, negative one, and negative one, one, two. So what we're going to do here, we, we need two vectors to do a cross product, right? So that means we need to construct two vectors to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have my first vector u. This is gonna be the vector that extends from p to q. So this is going to be two minus one, one minus negative one, and then it's going to be um, negative one minus zero. All right, define vectors Q, P, Q, R. Oh yeah, you were just saying how to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, and then if we simplify this here, we have one and two and negative one. Okay, that's gonna be U. Now let's do V. Um, v, I guess we're gonna go from P and then go to R right here. Okay, so we have negative one minus one uh, we have one minus negative one, and then we have two minus zero. Okay, so that's gonna give us a negative two, two, and two. All right, so we have these vectors pointing between these points. So let, me, let me draw a little bit of a, a picture here for you guys. So here, actually forget about that. Here is our plane, right? Let's say P is right here. Move it up, please. Oh, oh. Thank you. P is here, R is here, and then Q is here. All right, so P to R is this vector right here. And notice that P to R, this lies in this plane right here. And the same thing goes for P to Q. It's gonna go like this. So that means that when we do the cross product of these, we're going to end up with uh, let's see, is it gonna go up? Yeah, it is. So we're gonna end up with a vector pointing directly out of the plane like this. Since these are both in the plane, that means the cross product will end up being perpendicular to the plane. How do I know to use P as the starting or could we use any combination? 
you could use any combination as long as they um, as long as they go back to the same. Actually, yeah, you you could just use any combination. That, that that's totally fine. It doesn't need to be p. I usually just pick one point and make that the source for two of them. That's kind of just what I do. All right, so then let's actually compute the cross product here and figure out what this vector is going to be. So u cross v. So we have i, j, and k. All righty, so let's see. We have one, two, and negative one. We have negative two, two, and two. All right, let's see what we got here. So the minor for this one is going to be two, negative one, two, and two. We have minus j hat, and then we have one, negative two, negative one and two. And then finally, we have plus k hat here. We have one, negative two, two and two right here. Okay, so let's do the computation here. Let's see what we get. So we do two times two right here is four. Then I subtract negative two to get six. All right, I do one times two is two and I subtract another two, these negatives cancel out. So I get uh, negative four, wait. Oh no, I do two minus two and get zero actually. My bad, my bad, so it's zero. It's really easy to get these signs uh, mixed up here, especially with the J, so be, be careful about that. And then finally with K here, we have one times two is two, and then I subtract negative four. So it's gonna give me six. Okay, so this vector is going to be six in the X direction, six in the Z direction, and zero in the Y direction. Isn't it four? Um, no, it's, it's actually, it, it is gonna be zero because I do this times this, that's two. And then I do this times this, that's also two. And I subtract the results right there. So, yeah, there we go. So that's that's how we ended up doing this guy right here. Um, could we have found a vector perpendicular to the y equals one plane? Uh, well, these two guys are in the y equals one plane, but this one is not. So we can't just write the equation for this plane as uh, y equals one here. All right, so there, we found a, ver a vector perpendicular to this plane. And that's gonna be something we're gonna be doing very often, especially. This is probably the most common application of our cross product that we're gonna see. All right, find the area of the triangle with vertices one, negative one, zero, two, one, negative one, and negative one, one, two. Now you may notice that these are a bit familiar here. Uh, that's actually just these three points that we had up here. So we can kind of just draw the same thing again. We have Q, we have P, and we have R. All right, and then effectively what we're doing is we're looking at the area of this triangle here. Now, remember, we found this vector, uh, this one was V, and then we have this vector pointing this way, this one's U, and remember that the, uh, the magnitude of the cross product is the area of the parallelogram created by U and V. So we make a parallel vector to U here, a parallel to V here, and u cross v will give us the area of this whole parallelogram. But that's actually twice the area that we want uh, because we only want this first half of that right here. So it turns out that half of our cross product's magnitude will be the area of a triangle. Since it takes two triangles, it end up making this uh, parallelogram right here. All right, so let's see here. So we actually already know what u cross v is. We're just going to find the magnitude of six, zero, six. Because u cross v is the same as it was back here. Okay, so let's see. So the magnitude of six, zero, six is the square root of 36 plus zero plus 36 divided by two. And if I simplify this, this is gonna be the square root of 72 times uh, divided by two right here. So this is going to be the area of this triangle right there. 
All right. So anyways, that's how we find the area of a triangle. It's very similar to the, the parallelogram here. All right. What on earth are you talking about? Put the money in, oh my God. <laughs> I, I must have missed a lot if you're talking about McDonald's. Um, anyways, let's see here. Okay, so let me talk about the triple product now. Now, this is where things get a little bit hairy because we have two different types of multiplication for our vectors here. So we have the dot product as a way to combine vectors and get a scalar. And we have the cross product, which is a way to combine vectors to get another vector. But then if we can combine these two and get a vector, then there's nothing stopping us from after doing that, taking the dot product of another vector with the one we just got. And this is one of the, the triple products here. And another triple product we're in, we'll encounter later is this one where we just have three um, dot product, or sorry, three cross products right here. So this is another triple product. Um, why won't, so let me, let me ask you guys this, why won't we see uh, this one later? So this, this, this one's fake, this isn't a real thing. Why won't we see this one in the future or, or today or anytime? Because it's a vector times a scalar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, both the audience and um, online were saying that it's a vector crossed with a scalar because this is a scalar. And we do that first because this is the parentheses, but then we have U cross with the scalar that doesn't make any sense. You need to have two vectors in order to do a cross product here. So this, this product won't work. We can't just do any combination we like. We need to make sure that it still makes sense. And this one's okay because everything involved is a vector. And this one's okay because the result of this is a, again a vector and we do a dot product. Okay, so our next problem here is find the volume of a parallel a pipe ed determined by the vectors U, V, and W. So effectively what we're doing is we're stepping up our dimension from last time. So we have a V and W going this way, and then U is kind of popping out of the page right here. All right, so let's see here. So kind of like the, the, vol or the area of the parallelogram earlier, this is gonna be kind of similar. The volume of this is going to be the height of the parallel piped times the area of the base. That's gonna give us our volume uh, in this case right here. All right, so let's see. So we actually already know what the area of our base is going to be. Because if we look at our base, this is going to be a parallelogram. So what's, what's the area of our base gonna be? You guys can put it in chat, say it out loud here. Yeah, it's gonna be the magnitude of V cross W. That's right. Don't forget the magnitude symbol, we need that. So this is the magnitude of V cross W. That's right, so that's gonna be the area of our base. All right, now let's take a look at our height here. So let's see here, let's, let's drop the thing. Yeah, let's do it like this. Yeah, so here is the vector u cross w, or sorry, v cross w. Okay, so v cross w, that's kind of popping out of the page like this. It's perpendicular to both of them. Now, if we look here, here's an angle, right? And this is the angle, this theta is the angle between v cross w and u, right? So if we wanna get the total height here, which is how long this is, it's a little bit shorter than what u is going to be, we effectively want how long this is going to be here. We want this, and this is going to be u cosine of theta, because we're looking at the adjacent side of our triangle if we have the angle right here. So this height is going to be u cosine of theta. Or theta is the angle between u and then v cross w here. Yeah, you could, you could think, kind of think of it as we're projecting a u onto the same direction as v cross w. That, that's a good way of thinking of it too. 
All right. So now we have both of these, but remember that we just learned that the magnitude of the cross product is going to be, um, excuse me. Yeah, it's, it's, we could, we could just stick this right here. And so we have the magnitude of a vector, the magnitude of a vector, and then the cosine of the angle between them. So when we have a vector, a vector, and their magnitudes multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them, that's none other than a dot product. So this is going to be U dotted with V cross W right here. So if you ever wanna get the volume of a parallel pipe ed, this is going to be our um, way of doing it. Um, why doesn't W have the vector sign? Let's see, oh, because uh, I forgot it. There we go, <laughs> it should have the vector sign. Yeah, that's, 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 one of, that, that's like the plus C of this class is forgetting the vector sign. Don't forget the vector sign, because remember if I would have left it like that, that usually means the magnitude of me. So don't, don't forget that, but I, I admitted that it is easy to forget. All right, how did cosine disappear? Well, remember the definition of a dot product is the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied, and then we have cosine of the angle between them. So I effectively went from here to here. And the two vectors in this case were U and then V cross W. This class is physics in disguise. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna be seeing a lot of physics in here. Okay, now there's actually a, a kind of a convenient way of commuting the triple product. The triple products can be computed by replacing the i, j, and k in the top row by whatever the vector u is right here. So we just get rid of the i, j, and k, and we just put in uh, u right here. And since we don't have vectors anymore in here, since we don't have i, j, and k, this is going to spit out a scalar. But that's exactly what we wanted to do because it's the result of a dot product right here. Uh, does it matter which order the vectors are in? Yes, so it does matter um, which order V and W are in. So if we did W cross V instead, that would end up giving us the negative of what we had earlier. So the ordering for cross products matter quite a bit. Okay, so, and, and how would we do this, by the way? We would do this in exactly the same way that we've done the other determinants. So we would do U1, and then the minor for that is V2, V3, W2, W3. We subtract and have U2. We have V1, W1, V3, W3. And then we have U3. And we have V1, V2, W1, W2. So if you want to compute that scalar, this is how we're going to, uh, to do that here. All right, why did we decide to do um, V cross W rather than W cross V? We could have done W cross V and then our, um, our, our cross product would have went down instead. So you, there's actually a several different ways of doing this. You could do U cross W and then dot that with V if you want, and that will actually get you the same thing. That's effectively kind of just taking this and putting it on the side. So there is flexibility with the order here, but if you put the, uh, the cross product in the wrong way, you'll end up getting a negative. All right. Let's go over the properties of the cross product. So the cross product does actually have some nice properties. Um, U cross V, it's not going to be equal to V cross U, but it will equal negative V cross U. So this is what's, this, this property is called anti-commutativity. If you flip the order of it, you put a negative sign. And that kind of makes sense with the right hand rule, right? Like if you started off doing it this way, and then I pointed in the direction of the second vector and did it again, you would see that my third vector is going the opposite direction. So that's what's happening here. If you cross any vector with itself, you're gonna get the zero vector because obviously a vector is parallel to itself. And so sine of the angle between them would be zero. Okay, this one's kind of interesting. This says that if you have a constant times a cross product, you could stick the constant either on the U or on the V and the cross product will still be 
exactly the same. But the thing is, you don't put it on both of them. You don't put it on both U and V. You can only put it on uh, one of them here. All right, this is the distributive law, and that works exactly like you'd expect with U times this, and then we add, and then we have U times the second vector here. And the cross product also works if, or sorry, the, the distribution also works if the, the cross product comes second. And then this is what I was saying a few minutes ago about flipping the parallel pipe ed on its side. So this is the original way that we saw it in the picture earlier, but you could also do it where you have U cross V, you can almost imagine this is like the bottom of your parallel pipe ed, and then the height will be W right here. So that's effectively me just kind of taking this object and kind of flipping it on its side. It's obviously going to have the same volume if you do that, meaning that these two guys are going to end up being uh, equivalent here. All right. And another thing that I mentioned earlier is the cross product is not associative. So even if you have them all in the, the same order here, like U, V, and W, U, V, and W, it actually matters which pair of them you do first. So don't ever write something like this. So don't write this because it's not clear which pair you're going to be doing first. If you ever have three things that are crossed together, you need to specify which two you're going to be doing first. And it's not, it's not even something like back up here where, oh, it's just gonna be like a negative sign or something like that. Uh, this is often totally different from what this is right here. And here's a, here's a specific example I wrote down to show you that. Where did I put that? Here, so let's, let's say we did I cross, and then we have I cross J. So I'm gonna do it where I do these last two crossed first. And then I'm also going to do it where I cross the first two first and then I do the last one. Okay, so let's see. So I cross J, what's I cross J equal to? That's right, it's gonna be K. So this is gonna be K hat. And then what's I cross K hat going to be? Yeah, it's gonna be negative J, that's right. All right, so we get negative J hat from this cross product right here. All right, now let's take a look at the other one. What do we get with I hat cross I hat? Zero, right? And I think it's pretty clear. Actually, it wasn't written in the list up here, um, but <laughs> I, I think it's pretty obvious that if you do a cross product with zero, you're gonna end up getting zero from that. And last I checked, zero is not the same thing as negative J hat right here. So these are not the same. So this is kind of a, a demonstration of, of why this is not true. All right. So you were saying that this was physics class. Uh, you weren't totally wrong. Uh, we're going to look at an application of uh, physics here. Um, so last time we were working with uh, forces and sort of a, a cousin to thinking about forces is thinking about torque. You can imagine it as kind of like a, a rotational version of a force. That's effectively what torque is. And torque has this definition. The torque tau with a vector symbol is gonna be R cross F. All right, so what do these mean? Well, here, here's kind of an example here. So suppose you have this wrench and you're turning it in a particular direction. So um, you guys probably know that the further away you are, like if you have like kind of a longer lever, you're gonna be able to apply um, more force to it. So that's why this increases with R, and then obviously it's going to spin more if you apply more force to it. Now, why is it cross? There needs to be a time check. Oh, is it is it time for? Did I go over? There. What time is it? Uh oh, I'm sorry, guys. All right. Well, anyways, I'll put this. Um, I'll write up the notes for this last part. Uh, a little bit later then. I'm sorry I didn't get to uh, the end here. All right. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Oh, Professor Manley? Uh, just a second. Let me stop the recording. Okay.